Hello, my name is Carolyn Pearson, and I am a hydrologic engineer at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Risk Management Center. In this lecture, I will give an overview of the prerequisite data and pre-processing needed to perform inflow volume frequency analysis using RMC BestFit. I will cover the need for an unregulated data set, development of a critical inflow volume duration, calculating inflow volumes, rules of thumb for computing a peak to volume relationship, and how to handle uncertainty with flow estimates. A prerequisite for performing flood hazard analysis is obtaining an unregulated inflow period of record data set. You might be wondering, why is it important to use unregulated data in flow frequency analysis? Many locations have upstream regulation, which can significantly affect annual maximum flows and volumes. Many locations also have relatively short record lengths, which means that volume frequency curves need to be extrapolated to rare annual exceedance probabilities for risk assessments. When analytical frequency curves, such as log Pearson 3, are fit to regulated data, the impacts of regulation can be dramatic, especially for the extrapolated portion of the curve, resulting in significant over or underestimation of the risk. When there is upstream regulation, you will need to assess whether the regulation effects are appreciable. And if the effects are appreciable, perform analysis to remove the effects of regulation from the flow or volume data. An example of appreciable regulation can be seen in the figure. The red series is the annual maximum flow data with upstream regulation, and the blue series is the unregulated flow data. Frequency curves were computed for both annual maximum series, shown as the red and blue curves, respectively. You can visually see that the blue curve provides a better overall fit to the data and a more credible extrapolation. The main things to keep in mind are, unregulated flow or volume data should typically be used for frequency analysis. Using regulated data can over or underestimate the risk. It is important to assess whether upstream regulation has an appreciable effect on the data. Unregulated data sets should be developed when regulation effects are significant. Regulation can change over time. The data needs to be homogeneous, which means that we should not combine records of regulated data with records of unregulated data. And as always, engineering judgment will be required. To perform a volume frequency analysis, a prerequisite is estimating the critical inflow volume duration. The critical inflow volume duration for a reservoir is typically the inflow duration needed to obtain the peak water surface elevation and is related to the typical duration of inflow hydrographs. The critical duration can vary depending on the characteristics of the watershed and the dam, along with the type and magnitude of the flood. For example, snowmelt-driven floods typically have a longer critical duration than rainfall-driven floods. We are usually interested in modeling extreme floods, which will usually have a relatively short critical duration. In the graphic shown, the blue line displays the inflow hydrograph. The red line shows the outflow hydrograph, and the green line shows the pool elevation hydrograph. Notice that the peak stage will always occur at the point where the inflow and outflow hydrographs intersect. Small to medium sized watersheds typically have critical durations on the orders of days. Larger watersheds and snowmelt driven watersheds typically have critical durations on the order of weeks to months. Since critical durations can vary, a good practice is to select a handful of the largest flood events to identify a typical or average critical duration. As you examine the inflow, outflow, and reservoir stage hydrographs, use engineering judgment to visually assess the duration it takes from the beginning of an individual inflow event to the peak reservoir stage. Since the selected critical duration will be a whole number, precise estimates are not typically needed. In this example, critical inflow duration was evaluated for six large floods, as seen in the table on the right. The events ranged 
from two to four days in length, and the average of these durations was 2.9 days. For this dam, the selected critical inflow duration was three days. A common mistake is to confuse the critical inflow duration with the PMP duration. While a typical PMP duration based on the current hydrometeorological reports is 72 hours or three days, that does not mean that the critical inflow volume duration for the dam is also three days. As seen in this example for Prado Dam, the PMP duration is 72 hours. However, the critical inflow duration for Prado Dam is only one day. If the critical duration is less than one day, it can be rounded up to one day because the minimum critical duration for an RMC RFA analysis is one day. Inflow volumes typically need to be calculated from available daily average inflow data. Software options include HEC DSS, Microsoft Excel, or HEC SSP. When using HEC DSS, keep in mind a limitation is that DSS is unable to compute a two-day average. Historic flood data are typically reported and documented as peak instantaneous flow estimates. In order to use the historic information, we need to estimate the corresponding volume for the critical duration. A common way to do this is to estimate a peak to volume ratio based on observed hydrographs. For example, let's say you have a watershed with a critical duration of three days. One of the observed hydrographs has an instantaneous peak of 44,000 CFS and a maximum three-day average volume of 19,000 CFS. For this example, the peak to volume ratio would be 2.3. This should typically be done for several observed hydrographs to obtain an average estimate of the peak to volume ratio. Once we estimate a peak to volume ratio, it can then be applied to other historic flood events. Let's say a historic flood estimate has a peak discharge of 65,000 CFS. Using our peak to volume ratio of 2.3, the corresponding three day volume estimate for this historic flood event would be 28,300 CFS. There may be many ways to develop peak to volume ratios. Here are two common ways of estimating critical duration inflow volume for historic peak flows. Number one, using actual data is always best. If an observed historic hydrograph is available, Perform a moving average of the inflow volume and select the largest average inflow volume over your critical inflow duration to find the critical inflow volume. Number two, another common way to estimate historic flow volumes is to develop a peak to volume ratio. This involves creating an average peak to volume ratio based on the largest five to 10 floods in the observed record and using a forward moving average on the daily inflow record corresponding to the critical inflow duration. This peak to volume ratio relationship can be applied to other historic flood events. Non-systematic flood information, such as historic and paleo flood estimates, typically have large uncertainty that we should model using flow intervals in RMC best fit. When there is no information on the magnitude of the uncertainty, a reasonable rule of thumb is to estimate plus and minus 20% uncertainty around the best estimate. This is loosely based on the USGS standards for discharge measurement errors given a relatively poor measurement condition. When the historic information includes a quantitative estimate of the uncertainty, the quantitative estimate should be used instead of the rule of thumb. Make sure the magnitude of the uncertainty makes sense in the context of the information and methods used to estimate the flow and volume for the event. Sometimes we have uncertainty in the flow estimates for large historic floods. At times, we are lucky enough to have information that informs our uncertainty, such as a high water mark or a hydraulic model. As with many things, development of flow intervals requires engineering judgment. In this lecture, I've covered five types of prerequisite information and data pre-processing that needs to occur in order to develop a volume frequency analysis using RMC best fit. Unregulated data, critical duration, inflow volume, peak to volume ratios, and dealing with uncertainty. What questions do you have?